Shalom, shalom. First off, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakash Gadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who are learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honors, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth, feeding the sheep of Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel, given all diligence to make your calling and election sure day in and day out. So I just want to do a, a brief uh, news update. All right. A um, couple couple articles I came across that's showing, you know, uh, the, the sign of uh, the society collapsing. All right. Which is, you know, uh, the gospel, <laughs> good news for the hopeful elect, because we are, are in the spirit of of prophecy we're in the spirit of yahweh bashim yahweh shai hastening the day hastening the coming of the day of the lord and we know that the lord has given us signs all right given us things to to look out uh look out for in the world so that we can measure the time uh diligently all right and one of those things are is the um the uproars of the people the insurrection the mindset of you know uh the 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 people of this world is becoming more and more aggressive toward you know their um you know their uh, uh, um their government all right and, and mainly here in babylon the great so you got this article that came out yesterday which was sunday july 24th from uh, yahoo news it says nearly one in three americans say it may soon be necessary to take up arms against the government <laughs> uh, let it ride all right it says uh, take up arms against the government okay so that is, that's the mindset. It, said, it says nearly one in three. A majority of Americans say the U.S. is corrupt and almost a third say it may soon be necessary to take up arms against it, according to a new poll from the University of Chicago's Institute, Institute of Politics. So a majority of, of these Babylonians, all right, they have this mindset uh, uh, of their, their government being corrupt. And this place has always been corrupt, all right? This place has always been, you know, uh, uh, built on de deception, built on lies, built on witchcraft, all right, uh, uh, Satanism, all right? But now, as we're getting closer and closer to the end of this <clears throat> the end of this age, right, which the Lord told us, you know, uh, uh, there will be um, signs, all right, for, for the parting asunder of the, of the times, all right, the end of this age, the end of this world, which is Esau, in the beginning of it that follow it which is jacob all right that's why we are constantly harping on prophecy constantly paying attention watching for these things because these things let us know that our salvation is not so you have this uh, sentiment amongst the 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 citizens of this society of of you know here in america that the, the government is corrupt and like i said that is a sign of a of a collapse of an empire because you even had you know that same thing when you go back in history into uh, the ancient Roman Empire, you had the same thing take place, right? You had um, the citizens of of the ancient Roman uh, Empire, they revolted against the government, okay? They actually also, I forgot exactly what year it happened in, but they actually also um, uh, ro um, stormed their capital building as well, which, you know, that's something that still is talked about in the news today, all right, what happened over at the Capitol building in uh, January the 6th. I believe that was 2021. 20, uh, All right. So a majority of Americans say that the government is corrupt. And why is that? That's ultimately because this word has has uh, gone throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. And while, and by this word going going out, hey, the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is moving, is working, is doing exactly what the Lord said it, it would do. That's why the scripture says that his word does not go out void. So this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 27 says, For evil shall be put out, and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which hath been so long without fruit shall be declared. All right? And the, and the truth about the the, the inception, the, the, the uh, creation of America, all right, has been declared. Okay, see, for a long time, people thought that this place 
was, you know, a upstanding, shining light, uh, a pristine, blessed, <laughs> blessed country. When really this place has been, as it says in Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, uh, Babylon has been a golden cup in, a, in the Lord's hand. See, the Lord used America just like the Lord used ancient Egypt. All right. For a purpose. And that purpose ultimately for here in America was for us, the Israelites, to serve captivity because of our disobedience to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. All right. And then also for the Lord be, uh, to, to be willing to show his wrath. OK. On the on the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. OK, so that's why the Lord allowed America to the and the people who run America, which are the Edomites. All right. Whom, whom the Lord has an indignation for against forever. That's why he allowed uh, this place to get to this heightened um, spot that it's in right now. But now we're at the end. We're in a parting asunder of times. So the corruption is being overcome and the truth is being exposed. And now the truth about Babylon. All right. The truth about this place is that it was built on let me pull that up it was built on the blood the 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 robbery the rape the murder the murder the pillaging of the sons of god okay and that's not something that you can uh uh just you know try to wipe away from history that's not something that you can just try to move past no there there is a retribution for that there is a recompense for that and that's why you're seeing a whole unraveling of this entire world, because as the Lord said, he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of my eye. All right. Which the, that word apple basically basically means like the pupil of, a, of your eyeball and knowing <laughs> being touched in your eyeball is very it's a very sensitive, very disturbing feeling. OK, it's a very disturbing feeling when somebody, you know, pokes your eye. Even if you try to touch your own eyeball. So that's what the Lord likened Israel being touched by these other nations. All right. So this is the book of Num Numbers chapter 35 verse 33. It says, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. For blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. And you see the thing that this devil did when he came over here to america all right you already had the northern tribe of the nation of israel the 10 tribes over here gad reuben issachar ephraim simeon manasseh uh, um, asher naphtali zebulon all right if i missed any you know but what did he do when he got here he he robbed him he raped him he destroyed him he killed him try to try to genocide them <laughs> all right but as it is written in jeremiah the 31st chapter that israel would never stop being uh never cease from being a nation before the lord and then after that he went and grabbed the northern tribe i mean the southern tribe of of the nation of israel judah benjamin and levi from the west coast of africa and enslaved them and put them into a hardcore uh uh, uh bondage which once again was prophecy because we were disobedient to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but nevertheless, that blood of the saints, the blood of the of this, and when you go into the word saints, pursuant to Psalms the 50th chapter, I believe. Um, for I believe if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I know it's in the book of Psalms that it says what that I gather my saints together, them that made a uh, sacrifice to me, them that made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Who 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 only did that? What nation of people? did that that was the israelites all right and then this devil had the nerve to take the lord's uh, uh, word and establish it as the 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 law of the land when he came over here so as it is written in the scriptures they that uh, um what has thou to do to take my um instructions okay Thou sayest unto the wicked, what has thou to do to, to take my uh, my covenants and my instructions? And he did everything that goes against the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And but he did it in the name of of the God of the Bible, in, in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's straight blasphemy, and that has to be re uh, recompensed. That has to be repaid, because this place 
is built on the blood of the saints of the Most High and the blood of the sons of God. And it cannot be cleansed until <laughs> the, per the, the people who shed the blood, blood is shed. All right. So now that's why you have this, this mingled, this perverse spirit mingled here in America. That's why you having these uproars, these, these uh, uh, the, the nations feeling as though they have to uprise against their um, against their government. All right, let me get this also in the book of um, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter thirteen, verse um, Salaki, Ecclesiasticus ten, verse um, eight. It says, "Because I start at seven. Um, you know what? Start at six. It says, bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong and do nothing at all by injurious practices. <laughs> do nothing at all by injurious practices. And what has this place, America, been doing to the, the nation of Israel, the sons of God, all right, since it started? Injurious practices, the laws, the, the treatment, all right, you got the Jim Crow laws. You got the 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 um, civil rights. All these things, man. All right, it's been injurious practices. Your the the the, the uh, Planned Parenthood and you know amongst the communities of Israelites, the the foods that are being promoted, the mindset that Esau pushes upon our people by by um, influencing using uh, Israelite influencing influencers to push a wicked vibration on our people which those israelites that sell out and those israelites that do the bidding of of the devil of the of, the, of esau is going to pay as well but all these are injurious practices to the commonwealth of israel and that's why the the gospel is that you must return back to yahweh bashim yahweh shai seek the old past repent okay and take and take off the 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 ways of the god of this world man so it says, verse seven, pride is hateful before the most high and man, and by both doeth one commit iniquity. And that's what this whole world, all right, this whole age of Esau pushes, especially starting here in America. Pride, pride. And they and they have the they have pride in the most wicked, the most uh, uh, disgusting and abominable um, actions, man, thoughts. But that's the but that's what they uh, elevate. That's what they set in, in, in dignity. Folly is set in great dignity. And they do it with pride. And the scripture says what? It's hateful before the most high man. And that's why ultimately you're seeing the unraveling of this place. Because wicked cannot <laughs> wicked cannot triumphant forever, man. Hey, it's, it says you that in the book of Job. Doest thou not know that the triumphant triumphing of the wicked is but yet for a moment? All right. Wicked. It only begets uh, 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 evils, man. It only begets violence. It only begets uh, uh, death. And that's why the people are mourning. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And that mourning is now turning into wrath and anger. And that's, and that's going to turn all right, to what? To a response, to a reaction, an uprising, an insurrection. So verse eight, it says, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that is what we are watching. That's what we are seeing. That is what we are, are um, publishing, that this kingdom. All right. And I'm not talking about America's infrastructure and in in the way it does business and the way it, it uh, um, you know, does commerce. No. All right. Because all of this, as the scripture says, the, the works therein are going to be burnt up, but the rulership of the world is being is being translated from one people, which that one nation was Esau, to another, and then and that other is the world without end, Israel, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Israel, uh, uh with Yahweh Shai sitting upon that throne, all right, which this world and everything in it belongs to him, okay, and he said he's going to what allow the ones who overcome of Israel. To sit in his throne 
as he has overcame and sit and sit on the right hand of his father in his throne. So the, the, the kingdom to come is going to be a rulership, a dominion of the men of this of Israel. All right. Starting with the elect, starting with the prophets. All right. Starting with the house of David. OK, and that's why I said you in the book of Revelation, the fifth chapter, thou has made us. Let me pull that up real quick. And I know I'm jumping, but, you know, we, we jump, we, we, we flow with the spirit. Um, Revelation five. Verse. Verse 10, straight to the point, it says, and has made us into our power, which is Yahweh kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth we shall reign rule have dominion on the earth and uh, amongst the inhabitants of the earth so as as the house of david is waxing stronger you got the house of esau is waxing worse and worse so let's read it it says two-thirds of republicans and independents say that the government is corrupt and rigged against everyday people like me according to the poll compared to 51 percent of liberal voters 28 percent of all voter voters including 37 percent of gun owners agree it may be necessary at some point soon for citizens to take up arms against the government a view held by around 35% of Republicans and around 35% of independents. One in five Democrats concurred. The findings come after the House Committee investigation on June, January 6, 2021. Riots at the U.S. Capitol wrapped up its final hearing for the summer. All right, um, we could jump through all that. I should speaking about that incident, which we already know about. The division between conservatives and liberals across the country is only growing. OK, the division. The division, this Satan house being what divided the polls show that a quarter of Americans say that they have lost friends over politics. More prophecy, man. OK, hey, and this is beautiful. This is this is Yapa in, 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 in the eyes of the hopeful elect, man. This is music to our ears Isaiah 19 verse 2 and I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor city against city and kingdom against kingdom so how is that happening Be and why is that happening well because of the divisions that are going on remember as the Lord said it let's read it um I believe that's Mark, the third chapter. Let's see if that's what it is. Um, yep, Mark chapter 3, verse uh, 23. It says, And he said unto them, and he said unto them, and he said unto them, so like, and he called them unto him, and said unto them in the parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. All right. And that's what you're seeing here. Satan. <laughs> all right. Because the because the Satan is 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 the wicked, I should say, is 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 coming in the, in the working of Satan, whether it be the top elite or whether it be a low level Edomite, they all. They all in that same house. They all of that same seed, but now they're now they're being divided. Okay, there's another scripture that speaks about. Um, let's see, in, let's see. I know it's in the apocrypha. Um, spare with me. Yep. Ecclesiasticus 21 verse 27 it says when the ungodly curseth Satan he curseth his own soul <laughs> okay so you got these uh wicked ass uh, um Edomites all right and these other heathens but you, a lot of Edomites are at the forefront of this one of this wanting to uprise against the government as you see right here you got a picture you know of a so-called you know uh, uh, Edomite or looking actually I say so-called white man right 
which most of you know most of these Edomites are in that spirit where you know they got this their sword the modern day sword is the gun okay and they're cursing they're cursing the elites of this world which the elites of this world they they're working directly with Satan but what that's that's they're ultimately cursing their own soul all right because they got this notion that if they can overturn the government then they can bring in the 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 constitution and you know the 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 ways of the their their forefathers before but that's not going to happen all right you're only going to wax worse and worse okay so the un, so the that the spirit that is in these americans these egyptians to rise up against their uh, leaders is ultimately bringing their own destruction, their own downfall. Okay, but as it reads, it says the poll shows a quarter of Americans say they have lost friends over politics. And what I was thinking, I'm like, well, if you losing friends over politics, what do you think is going to happen when these plagues intensify? When now you got to fight for the for for uh, uh, gas and food because it's being rationing. It, the, the rations are happening. You gotta, you're trying to find medication for your sick grandmother, your sick mother, okay? People are fighting over political views. <laughs> that's going to be just the, that's just the tip of the iceberg, man. It's going to get way, way worse. And that's why the scripture says that, that uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. All right. Also in, the, in, in Ezra, second Ezra, it tells you that friends shall fight one another like enemies. And that spirit we can clearly see is out, man. All right, it's, it's clearly out. It says more than 70% of Republicans and more than 70% of Democrats Democrats both agree on, on the other side are generally bullies who want to impose their political beliefs on those who disagree. And half of all Americans believe the other side is misinformed about politics because they because of where they get their information and news <laughs> and news. The poll found so nobody trusts each other on, on both sides of the spectrum. And that's why that's why us, we are just sent here to prophesy against the downfall of this place, man. All right. Because we're not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. So we don't care about the left uh, of Esau's political, you know, political parties or the right of, of Esau's political parties. There's, as the scripture says, two, they have, uh, the beast had two horns like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. All right. And that and those horns are on the same beast. So we want to see and we are, are prophesying that this whole beast is going to be destroyed. Not one side, not the in one side prevails. No, the Lord is about to take out this whole entire system, man. And anybody who is joined unto it is going to uh, uh, be be slain with it. All right. And that's why you you Israelites, man, you need to wake the hell up. OK, wake the hell up and understand where your power lies in. Are right? you, you trying to trust in the in the arms of man? You're trying to trust in the shadow of Egypt. But that's going to be to your own downfall and confusion because these Edomites, they don't even trust in, in their own shit, man. OK, so there was another article uh, real quick that I wanted to read. I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's pretty length, uh, lengthy, but it says world key workers threaten to threaten to hit the economy where it hurts. It says the the emic has put an unprecedented strain on global supply chains and also on on also on the workers who have kept those systems running under tough conditions it looks like many of them have had enough a surge in strikes in other labor protesters is threatening industries all over the world and especially the ones that involve moving goods people and energy around from railway from railway and port workers in the u.s to natural gas fields in australia to truck drivers in Peru, employees are demanding a better deal as inflation eats into their wages. <laughs> what is that? Uproars. Precisely because their work is so crucial to the world economy right now, with supply chains still fragile and job markets tight, those workers have leverage at the bargaining table. Many disruptions caused by labor disputes could add to the shortages and soaring prices that threaten to trigger recession. OK, so all in all, what is happening? People are becoming more and more 
uh, um, irate. They're becoming more and more angry at the conditions of their of their uh, standard of living. All right, because the standard of living is at an all time low all throughout the world. All right, and that and that once again is 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 a uh, prof prophecy being fulfilled. Second Ezra fifteen verse fourteen. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for their sword for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. All right, their destruction draweth not. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. We just read that in the last um, um, article that they that they're ready to, to, to stand up and fight not only against the government, but against their neighbors. OK, you got employees against the employer. Uh, that, uh, I got to try to see if I can find this scripture. The elder had brought it out after camp on Friday. And that, you know, it hit straight on the straight on the money, man. I believe he said it was uh, Amos 8. Let me see. So I just bear with me. Let me see if I can find it. Maybe Amos. Amos 3. Nope, not three, not three. All right, I do this. So, uh, sower, reapers. Oh man, sower. Let me type in. Shot, let me find this. Amos, the fifth chapter. chapter Salakia so just bear with me just bear with me really want to find this Probably not going to find it. If I do find it after this video, I will upload it. I mean, I will put it in the comment section, you know, because I don't want to take up too much time. But there's a scripture that says that the uh, sower shall basically um, overtake the reaper. Let's see. Or something to that effect. Is it reaper? Oh, here we go. Dwadi Haba Shemel Shai. Yep. Amos chapter 9, verse 13. It says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Bashim Haba Shai, that the plowman, oh, sorry, the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet uh, sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Okay? So the so the plowman, that is a that is basically the employee. The one who is doing the work, the one who is out there in the field toiling, it says shall overtake the reaper. And the reaper is the one that's getting the benefits from the employee. All right. All the plowman doing all the work. OK. They're the ones that's getting the benefits, the the treader of grapes. So the ones who is set, stepping on the grapes and having to do all the physical labor, him that soweth the seed. OK. And the one who soweth the seed is the one basically that owns the uh, the, the crop. All right. They own the um, the vineyard. You see, so they're the ones now the, the, the worker is overtaking the employer. And that's what this um, that's what this uh, uh, article was going into. You see, it going back to the top. It says that the um, the employees now have the bargaining. They have the bargaining. Uh, uh, they have an advantage at the bargaining table. Where is it? Uh, boom, boom, boom. I read this last part. It says, 
the, the MAC has put an unprecedented strain on the global supply chain and also on the workers who have kept those systems running under tough conditions. It looks like many of them have had enough. OK, they have had enough right here. This is what I was looking for precise, precisely because of their work, because their work is so crucial to the world economy right now with supply chain still fragile and job markets tight. Those workers have leverage at the bargaining table. All right. They have leverage. So they're overtaking them. It says global supply chains weren't calibrated to deal with a crisis like the Emic, and employers have really pushed that crisis onto the backs of the workers. For their part, central bankers have been fretting about workers getting paid too much and setting off a wage price spiral like the one that sent inf inflation soaring in 1970. In fact, there's not much sign of that with wage gains generally lagging behind prices, partly because organized labor is broadly less powerful than it was back then. But that may but that may mask a different problem. Much of today's inflation stems from specific choke points and labor unrests in those key industries could have widened wider ripple effects on prices. A threat, a threatened strike by Norway's energy workers, for example, sent fresh tremors through Europe natural gas markets earlier this month. OK, so you have all of these low wage workers or all of these you know, workers who uh, basically keeps the economies and in, in uh, in these industries going. They're basically having enough, you know, they're, 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 they're uprising, they're uproaring, which is a sign of the end of this, uh, of, of the sign of the end of this age. Okay. And all of these things are just going to exacerbate the problems that we are already seeing happening. The inflation, the shortages, the supply chain uh, being cracked. Okay. All these different industries having issues. But on top of that, the Lord has put a spirit in the, in the plowman a spirit in the tread of the grapes to now respond and react and, and, and demand, you know, uh, a better, better uh, wages. But you got these employers, you know, <laughs> they're because they're they're uh, greedy. They're greedy of gain. Right. They're trying to trying to do whatever they can to not pay. But ultimately, in a lot of these, you know, uh, people who work in these low waged um a lot of these people who work in these low waged uh, uh, um, industries is who is Israel is Jake. All right. Um, where's that? James, the fifth chapter. Let's go straight to the point. It says verse four, it says. Um, I saw that three, your gold and silver is cankered in the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasures together. Uh, for the last days, behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth in the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. All right. And who are those ones who are crying and crying into the Lord? Who are the ones that is being, you know, they got the shit in this and shit end of the stick. The ones who are, are working. All right. And putting money in holes. Uh, uh, putting money in bags with holes in it, it's the it's the the saints <laughs> of the Most High, the Israelites. They're the ones that are complaining, okay? They're the ones that that are are crying up to the Heavenly Father, just like back in ancient Egypt. And I ended out with that. The same thing happened. Now we know that although the Lord is going to uh, uh, destroy two thirds of Egypt, I mean so two thirds, uh, two thirds of um, of of Israel. Right. But nonetheless, for the elect's sake, for the elect's sake, the Lord is hearing our cries and our groanings, man. This is Exodus two, uh, 2 verse 24. It says and the I start at 23 and it came to pass in a process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto the most high by reason of the bondage and the most high heard their groanings. And the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And the Most High looked upon the children of Israel, and the Most High had respect upon them. Okay? He had respect upon the children of Israel all right, during that time, and he has respect upon the elect of the nation of Israel, okay, during this time. Okay? And the, and the elect 
they're the, they're signing crying for the abominations that are being done here the 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 uh, um, usury the riches you know uh, that's that is got by deceit all right the labors that we are you know having to do for this devil okay and the lord is having um is remembering the covenant that he made with our forefathers man and now we're seeing now and that's why we're seeing all these things happening in the world so you know i'm gonna end it there just want to bring these two articles out lord willing this was edifying informative to the elect hey keep watching keep praying stay in the spirit stay strong man and we almost out of here so with that call lord yahweh bashim yahweh shai bashim rakai kudash till next time shalom